The Miss America competition has been going on all this week in Orlando. The reigning Miss America, by the way, is Grace Stanky of Wisconsin. One of the 51 contestants in this year's pageant, don't forget Puerto Rico, grew up in the North Country. Now she lives across Lake Champlain. We meet Miss Vermont on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Clarkson University, offering over 95 programs of study with campuses in the Hudson Valley, Central, and Northern New York. More at clarkson.edu. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Friday, January 12th. First up. Next week, Governor Kathy Hochul will fill in the details of her 2024 agenda when she releases her budget plan. She's expected to lay out how she'll close a multi-billion dollar budget gap and how to pay for the care of tens of thousands of asylum seekers who came to New York over the past year. Karen DeWitt reports from Albany. The state faces a $4.3 billion deficit for the fiscal year that begins April 1, and the gap is expected to grow to over $9 billion in the following year. On Tuesday, Governor Hochul will need to show in her budget presentation how she will close that gap. Choices range from tamping down on the rate of the growth of spending to raising taxes or imposing new fees. State Controller Tom DiNapoli, who provides independent oversight of the state's finances, finances, says revenue collections have been uneven. Tax collections are down from a year ago, and he says the economy is still volatile. We've been kind of flashing that yellow light of caution for a while, so I would still flash uh, that yellow light. He urges Hochul and the legislature to be careful managing the state's money this year. We have to make some tough choices on spending, be careful on taxation, and not resort to more debt. Hochul seems to agree with that advice. She told her state agencies last fall to hold the line on spending, and she said that she opposes calls from progressive lawmakers to increase taxes on the state's wealthiest residents. I'm not raising taxes in our budget this year. Taxes are high enough in the state of New York, and we have to live within our means. There's one area of spending that the governor may not be able to avoid increasing, and that is taking care of the over 100,000 asylum seekers who have crossed the southern U.S. border and have been bused to New York from states including Texas. Hochul avoided talking about the migrant crisis during her State of the State speech, saying she's putting off that controversial topic until she releases her spending plan. Last year, the state spent nearly $2 billion to help ease the migrant crisis. And when the mid-year budget report was released in October, the governor said the spending rate was unsustainable. Her budget director, Blake Washington, recommended that the state consider limiting spending on legal aid support and caseworkers who help the migrants find jobs. But the governor has also said there will be more money spent to help the migrants in the new budget. Senate Deputy Majority Leader Mike Gianaris, who, like Hochul, is a Democrat, says the migrants are already in New York and need help, so the state will have to find a way to pay for it. The migrants are here, and as long as they're here, we need to make sure uh, we provide for them as required by law and as required by humane values, which we have. So we'll do the best we can. Gianaris says New York will have to deal with the migrant crisis until the federal government does its job. The two biggest portions of the budget are health care and education. And in the past, when there have been multi-billion dollar deficits, governors have trimmed money from school aid and Medicaid. Hochul, in the past two years, has fully funded what's known as foundation aid for schools. She finally fulfilled a nearly two decades old court order that required the state to spend billions of dollars more on its poorest schools. So far, though, the governor has only committed to spending an additional $10 million to improve reading scores. Regarding health care spending, the state will be getting some help from the federal government. It granted a waiver to allow New York to spend nearly $6 billion more dollars on health care over the next three years, targeted to financially struggling safety net hospitals, improving health equity, and funding more staff to ease ongoing shortages. Hochul's also said she'd like to use $200 million more million from the Opioid Settlement Fund to help address the overdose crisis. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt for the New York Public News Network. Yamuna Turco grew up in Essex and Keysville. She attended elementary school and high school in Plattsburgh before graduating from a Massachusetts boarding school. She's now a student at St. Michael's College in Vermont 
which qualified her to compete for and win the title of Miss Vermont. Kara Chapman caught up with Turco about what it's been like to represent the Green Mountain State. A quick scroll through the Miss Vermont Instagram feed will tell you that Yamuna Turco has had a busy nine months. And we are at the Virgins Memorial Day Parade. I am in Montpelier for the 4th of July Day Parade. We are making upwards of 50 care packages. And we're at the Berry Heritage Day Festival. And we are back with my October episode of the Miss Vermont Voice. And I'm at the Enosburg Light Show, currently behind a bus. And I'm going to show you so many videos. Happy holidays, everyone. Turco says she's made more than 60 appearances as Miss Vermont since winning the title last April. That's on top of being a full-time student at St. Michael's College. I am a psychology and political science double major. Um, I'm hoping to go into community work. She's also an honors program member, a student leader with the college's community service program, and a peer note taker for fellow students. Turco says the emphasis at St. Mike's on volunteering and community is what led to her involvement with the Miss Vermont Scholarship Organization. You know, being Miss Vermont is not just about like being on stage and being like super confident and outgoing and like always like turned on and like always this public figure. But it's also about being able to connect with people. One of the requirements for the Miss Vermont and Miss America competitions is to create a community service initiative. Turco decided to focus on reading and called her initiative One Book, One Child. I seek to increase access to books and stories and help like foster a love of reading in kids. Turco says she's donated almost 400 books as Miss Vermont and talked to hundreds of elementary school kids about books and reading. She says she's found that often when kids don't like reading, it's because they don't have access to the books that they like. And once they have access to those books, they begin to fall in love with reading or maybe fall back in love with reading. Turco says her target age range for One Book, One Child is young elementary school students to early middle schoolers. She says that's when kids can struggle with reading, but also when they can find out what they enjoy about it. She says those are also the ages that reading opens so many worlds for her. I'm very fortunate that, you know, that my parents read to me, but because I am a first generation American, they read to me to connect me with the world around me. Turco's parents immigrated to the North Country from South Africa. She grew up in Essex before they moved to Keysville, where they own a sheep and cattle ranch. So, Turco was well prepared for all the agricultural events she's attended around the Green Mountain State. I love cows with my whole heart. Um, and to like be from a state that has so many cows and so many, like, be able to attend so many agricultural based events and festivals was incredible for me. But she's also had to step out of her comfort zone. Miss Vermont attends the Lake Champlain International Fishing Derby every year. Turco learned about the weigh stations and prizes people get for catching the biggest fish. And that was probably the most surprising thing to me because I don't know a ton about fishing. Like, I like fishing, but I'm not good at it. And learning about that was interesting. But it's also my favorite event, probably because I had I kissed a fish. Turco says she loves Vermont. It's a place she'd like to live. But she says when she wears the Miss Vermont sash, she's representing people from the North Country and South Africa, too. And so I'm just proud to represent everyone that I know and everyone that I will meet. And I know that at Miss America, I'm just going to do my best. and I'm going to bring that perspective with me and be able to broaden my perspective and share it with other people. The Miss America competition started in Orlando earlier this week. Turco's family and some friends are there with her. She's gone through the interview process as well as the preliminaries like evening gown and talent. Turco's talent is singing. Here she is at the 2023 Youth Talent Search in Enosburg Falls. Turco and the other state title holders will all go to the finals on Sunday to find out who made the top 10. If selected, she'll go through the question, fitness, evening gown, and talent portions again. The judges start from scratch and rescore all of that to determine the next Miss America. Turco says she's really grown during her time as Miss Vermont. And a big takeaway for her is that she's more capable than she thought she was. I didn't realize like how much I could do until I did this. And that's super important. You can find out if Turco made the top 10 by watching the Miss America finals at 7 p.m. this Sunday. They'll stream for free at WatchMissAmerica.com. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio. We have more news all the time and through the weekend on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by I Am Snow Angel of Lake Placid and the Buskers Band of Alexandria Bay. Have a super weekend. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.